Hello guys, it's Alex from PokerDiaries.net. Today we're gonna play something a little different. So we're gonna play a fast forward session. Uh, but uh, the difference is we're gonna use uh, 50 big blinds uh, buy-in. So it's gonna be a little different strategy. We'll see what are the benefits of this strategy, what are the downsides of this strategy, and do we wanna use it? Let's try. We're on two tables on Winamax. So we are buying for uh, 25 uh, euros. Uh, we're going to defend with, with our uh, freeze on a big blind against the button. So on this board we have to call at least once. I didn't uh, turn on uh, my HUD, I'm going to turn it on now. And against one third is defend. So uh, we expect to win uh, enough, uh, enough times with our check with freeze. And we do, nice. So with the jacks. Uh, this guy looks tightish, so we're not gonna stack off right now, but we're gonna hold for sure. I guess one third we have a, an easy call, and he can still have a lot of hands for beating like uh, ace queen or a jack or like two nines or two eights. So if he checks, we're gonna stack off here, and uh, if he folds, uh, it's uh, it's pretty good outcome. So our strategy is going to be to uh, bind with the 50 big blinds and uh, leave the table with 75 big blinds. So we don't want to have a big stack like we uh, usually play with, a, with 100 big blinds or more. So uh, what's the reason behind that? So there are a few reasons. So if uh, there are bomb pots, uh, we can uh, stack off uh, wider. So in a Zoom games, fast forward games, there are often uh, bomb pots, so then we can uh, stack off a little wider. Also, people are not uh, used to playing against the mid stacks. They're used to playing usually against the short stacks, so against the 25 buy-ins, uh, big blinds buy-in, uh, or against the 100 big blinds buy-in. But people rarely study against the 50 big blinds buy-in. So with our ace king, we are stabbing one third and taking it down. So here we are opening a little wider with a deuce five, uh, because uh, our big blind is folding enough. Also, we're gonna open a little wider with ace free if we have opportunity. This guy's uh, folding a big blind uh, to steal uh, 62%. So, with a king jack, uh, we are going. Uh, to get the stacks in if we can, so we're gonna get bet big the flop, possibly over bet the turn. But on this card, we're not gonna over bet on this card, we're just gonna bet around 80% of the pot and uh, and shove any river uh, on the right table. We're in the bomb pot, so we are opening a little bigger than if it was a normal pot. So there are added five big blinds in the pot, similar thing like on a, on a GG. Uh, so this guy is folding a lot out of position if he's not raising enough so we can uh, we can range bet here one third and continue on any nine on any king on any ace and we take it out nice So we're gonna leave a table when we have uh, over 75 big blinds. So we are leaving right table. So one of the, the added benefits of this strategy is that people are not used to playing uh, against players who have 50 big blinds. And also, if they're gonna note you like a fish because of your weird stack, that's also good for you. So they will play uh, worse against you because they will uh, think you're a fish. So with 9 6 unit we have to defend against UTG. Uh, with an open ender we have to call at least one street. It's not a great flop because there is also a flush draw. And if you continue on a, on a paired board now we have to fold. We can be drawing dead already. So against a small bet on the left table we're gonna raise. Against the bigger bet we're just gonna call. This is the uh, board that favors us a lot, so he should not be barreling a lot on this board. So now when he just tells us that he has two overcards, we're going to bet in small to get value from his uh, hand like King-Queen or Ace-Jack or 
a screen or something. So he, he should pr probably have uh, zero eights in his range. He can have uh, some sevens, so he can have hand like a six seven opening pre flop and checking the flop. But I don't think it's very likely, so we are still going for value here. It's gonna be a small bet, so we're hoping to get a call from uh, from any over pair or from even ace highs if he is very if he is very enthusiastic in calling. Uh, so on this board, we're gonna uh, step two times on the blind turn, so he can still call us with a much weaker hand, so he can call the flop with a hand like two sevens and two eights that can, he will fold the turn always. He gonna call also with the ace ten, jack ten, so we are getting value from this. And if he has a king or a queen, then we're gonna lose anyway. Uh, but we are not getting him uh, uh, free roll the river with his equity. And this is an interesting river, so now the flush comes in, but we also have a set on this river, so we are shoving here for for a pure value. He, I think he's still gonna call us with a king, but he folds, so it's fine. So he probably had a queen. So uh, this board favors uh, the caller a lot, but this guy just overfolds, so we're just gonna step here. I'm going for a small free bet against a uh, small stack with the races. Ah, this is a ridiculous race. This race doesn't mean anything. This he's actually telling us he's bluffing. So if we're gonna rebluff here, because he cannot have anything with this race, and we're gonna stack up with the races, and yeah, the guy falls. So on a board six is deuce. What is he raising? Is he raising six? Probably not. Is he raising deuces? Probably not. So is he raising two eights? Probably not. So why is he raising? He's just telling us uh, that he is bluffing, and we're just gonna re-raise back. Okay, now we have uh, over 80 big blinds, so we're gonna leave the table and come in again with the uh, with 50 big blinds. So we don't want to have a big stack at any time, so then uh, we cannot uh, stack off easily in the bump pots, especially in the big bump pots. So there are bump pots with uh, like uh, 50 big blinds, even uh, with uh, 100 big blinds sometimes. So we want to have opportunity to stack off lighter in these uh, situations. So we can get uh, lucky and win the pot, uh, win extra big blinds. But uh, let's say we have a uh, 150 big blinds, uh, then we just have to stack up with a pretty good range. So let's see how much this guy is opening. So this guy is opening 70% CTG, but he's for betting a lot. So we are not gonna re-steal with our king jack. Not actually re a free bet for, with a uh, king jack. But if he were not for betting so uh, so aggressively. They now with the uh, free bet with, with the king jack. Uh, with the king nine, uh, we're gonna open here. We're gonna open to five big blinds because there, it's a bomb pot. There's added five big blinds. So uh, from a mathematical standpoint, we should uh, open even bigger. But I think five big blinds open is uh, good enough to uh, make the fold. So this guy uh, is sometimes check raising. Let's see if he's doing this uh, this time also. So we have a uh, note that one of the five times he check raised when he limped. So uh, actually he limped raised when he, when he limped. So it seems he's doing this quite uh, quite a bit. So we are not gonna isolate him in the future with a hand uh, like ace eight that we cannot continue. But with some suited hands or some connected hands that we can continue, we're gonna isolate him also. And these games, uh, like in uh, any fast forward games, they are right infested and knit infested. So against the many nits, uh, we're gonna open very, very wide from the small blind or from the big blind, because they will just uh, overfold pre-flop. But when they call, we're gonna be very observant uh, post-flop. So you see this guy is, uh, is very nitty, he's playing 16, 13, but he's still falling a lot to a uh, free bet uh, on this, situ uh, this situation when he opens small blind. So that's the reason we are free betting him. And uh, um, with the ace queen, we can even make a bigger isolation, something like a seven or eight. But I think six blinds is fine. With ace deuce, uh, our standard here is to free bet from the small blind. We're usually playing free bet or fold. And so we are in a multi way, not a great situation, but we still have a very, very strong hand. And this guy is just a huge fish, he has no idea what he's doing. We're just gonna bet here big. 
I'm just uh, making note that uh, he's a fish, so I have uh, this uh, blue tag for a uh, fish who are a uh, little tighter, green one for the fish who are a little looser. So I was just checking how much is this guy gonna fold on the turn if he continue barreling. But when he uh, fold the flop, it's obviously a great outcome. On the left able, we're gonna leave because we have 85 big blinds and come back with a 25. Uh, with a uh, 50 50 blink lines nothing interesting happening at the moment Uh, Jack eats you to the uh, easy open from the button if we have opportunity. But if it's already open before us, we can fold. I guess the cutoff open, we can still uh, play the game, uh, place the, the hand on free bet. But against the UTG and MP open, it's a lose to free bet. Uh, Jack eats you it. So, King Simon suited, uh, we have to defend, especially in the multi way. This guy is a super net, he's playing 18-16, he's opening uh, very very tight from, uh, from this position, so he's opening the same range that should, he should be opening UTG, but kick 7 suited is defend even from UTG, against UTG, so we have to defend, against the guy who is folding 67% to steal, so we are opening any two cards, we don't care about our folding because he's just over folding. Uh, same stuff here, so guys folding 69%, any two, good enough. East time is standard open from uh, middle position, so according to, uh, to GTO open raises, it should be also open from UTG, but um, I try to play a little tight from UTG, so sometimes I don't open it. I start opening East, uh, East time from, uh, from middle position. So on this board, I would continue betting uh, with this hand if I also had a diamond, but when I don't have a diamond, I think uh, checking back is fine. We don't want to get a check raise and we still have a lot of equity on this board. So against the guys who are overfolding, I'm opening small blind at 2.5. Against the, the good regs, I'm opening 3x. I don't want to give them a too good uh, price. So. Against uh, this guy, we're gonna bet the river because now he's gonna fold or his sixes, sevens, eights that he called the, the turn. And pretty, pretty nice. We are also blocking uh, a lot of kings and queens. So uh, here, uh, this guy looks very, very nitty, but the guy on the big blind is uh, free betting 21% in this situation. That's the reason we are not, uh, we are not opening. Here with a uh, reject them, uh, we are going exploitatively for uh, two weeks open because these guys are super nits, they're gonna fold anyway. And with our aces, we are going uh, for a big bet, hoping to get a call from a, from a jack or from a flash draw, but unfortunately, nobody has anything. Ajax suited, standard free bet, big blind versus a small blind. So. We are going for uh, one third uh, C bet, standard. This guy is a little uh, uh, aggressive sometimes, so we're gonna be careful against him. Not gonna keep barreling here. So expect him to bluff me here actually quite a lot, but he's still gonna have a many nines or many sevens. But with this sizing, we have to we have to fold. Net on the big blind, standard uh, opening any two. Net on the big blind on the right table. So any player with a VPAP uh, under uh, 20, I'm gonna consider a net. So on this board, we can uh, get away with, our, with a range bet. He cannot continue much, even though he knows we are uh, C-betting very light. Uh, here we have to defend with a with a queen eight, 
And now uh, we're gonna try to, to bluff here. We are in a multi-way, the guy on the button uh, usually does not have much. We are blocking uh, some jacks. And we can also continue on some cards on the turn. So when he calls, he sometimes uh, has a jack, but he usually has a, a hand that's weaker than a jack, like two eights or two nines. So now uh, we can continue bluffing here on the king, but if he calls us again, I will assume that he always has a jack or better, so I will just uh, give up. But I expect to get a lot of faults, and he falls very nice. So, we, uh, when we have 70, over 75 big blinds, we are leaving the table. So I'm considering opening uh, with a king six, uh, but it seems uh, we don't have opportunity to open here. And the guy on the small blind was uh, free betting a lot anyway, so maybe it will not be good to open. Uh, with ace uh, six, I don't like opening, so if uh, the guy is not overfolding, this guy is not overfolding, so we're gonna fold our ace six. I would prefer to open ace four or ace three with, uh, from small aces than ace six. Because with a6 we don't uh, have any um, any straight potential. So uh, on this board we can range bet or we can check. We have many uh, back doors here, so we don't have to see bet. So now with our top pair and also flush draw, we are uh, we are delayed see betting here, and we hit when we hit the flush, we're gonna bet a little bigger here. He gonna call us if he had any decent pair. But it seems he doesn't, so it's fine. So uh, when we free bet, we get to see bet uh, here one third on any king high board. Same thing would be if uh, there is a ace high board. Actually, we really are not gonna see bet uh, in a free bet uh, pot. So we're not gonna see bet on uh, some very, very coordinated board like seven, eight, nine, or something like that. On a skateboard, we can always uh, make a range bet. Uh, here with a queen 10, it's actually uh, quite close. We can defend or we can fold, so depends uh, on our opponent, so how how good he is. If we think we have a post flop patch, we can, uh, we can call. But against the cutoff, reg opening cutoff, we are always defending uh, queen 10 off. So by default, I'm gonna fold this uh, very weird, weird uh, things this guy did. Uh, but uh, if I have some notes on him, or uh, if I uh, so see, see some showdowns from him, then I'm gonna call him a little wider. In many situations, this is, this is just nuts. And uh, sometimes Fisher are doing this with the weird hands, like with the two sevens or uh, Ace and suited or something like that. So we are still not in a great spot to call with a uh, with ace queen. But if we know the guy is uh, doing a lot of weird stuff, then we'll just have to gamble. So on this board, very easy range bet one third. Guy folds, very nice. So. 8-9 is, uh, is defend against the rag, but against the net it's not defend, so we're just gonna fold. You should be very careful uh, who are you playing against. You cannot play the same hands in the same way against totally different players. If the guy has a much, much wider range, you have to defend wider. If the guy is uh, very tight, you have to defend uh, tighter. That's one of the problems when you're uh, playing totally without a HUD. If you play totally without a HUD, you're actually gambling a lot because you don't have uh, enough info who are you playing against. So this guy looks like a reg, so we are opening uh, 3x against him. But when he free bets, we have uh, the very weak hand ace 8. But if we have the ace 10 or ace jack or uh, king queen or king jack, we're gonna continue probably by 4 betting. 
But that also depends on his uh, his tendencies in this spot. So on this board, we can always uh, see bet range if we want. It's also fine to check back here since uh, we have some back doors. Uh, but when he calls, we can check back here. Uh, I was planning to bet the river, but on this card we're not betting the river. So actually we uh, went out cheap from this hand, losing only one uh, small bet. So this guy is uh, folding a lot to a free bet, even though he's very nitty. So uh, we're gonna re-steal against him and we have a huge sample on him. I mean, huge sample for Zoom, we have a 5k hands on him. On my regular tables, I have like uh, 30 or 40k on some players, but on Zoom tables, having more than uh, 2000 hands on somebody is pretty good. We are not happy to call here with a king nine, but we have to. The guy has only 10 big blinds and we have one of the worst hands uh, against us possible, but it's fine. Uh, with freeze we're gonna open here if we have opportunity so this guy has only 20 big blinds so we cannot call here to set mine and we are also playing short only uh, with uh, 50 big blinds so it's probably not a good idea to set mine anyway so playing with 50 big blinds is uh, similar a lot to uh, tournament play so uh, when we get free bet we can uh, fold much more because uh, if we have hand like, uh, let's say we have 8-9 suited and if we get free bet, now the uh, SPR is gonna be much bigger. So that means we have much less implied odds, we have much uh, less room to, uh, to make a hand and um, get value for our hand. So that's the reason we're gonna a little overfold with, uh, with some hands when we get free bet. And in some situations we have to, we have opportunities to stack off wider. Uh, so with 10-7 suited, uh, easy defend against the rag. So this guy is super neat, we are opening any two. So with top pair we're gonna call, so pretty good card. Oh, this is a great card. So now we're gonna bet big, he's gonna call us with any pair probably. Nice. Uh, we are isolating against the limp. So we always want to isolate against uh, the limpers if we have any opportunity. So limpers are usually very weak players. So I see many players uh, betting here with our Jack-10. So that's a pretty pretty big mistake. Uh, we don't need to bet here. So we have some showdown, uh, we have some back doors. We can check back if we have opportunity. And uh, sometimes our 10 is gonna be good. Sometimes we're gonna improve. So with Jack's here, uh, if he's gonna shove here, we're gonna call because we are short stacked. If we had uh, 100 big blinds and if he shoves here, we're gonna fold. But you see in this situation, because we are shorter, uh, we have to stack off with the jacks. So same thing here on the queen. I also see many players betting here because they have pair and up and down, but uh, there is no reason to bet. We still have showdown and we can still outdraw some people who have queen or king on the river. Also, we have easy decision here. If anybody bets, we're just gonna fold. So we're not expecting anyone to uh, bluff multiway. And if they all check, sometimes we're gonna win with our 10, so that's very nice. On the right table, leaving 75 big lines. So these guys are super nits, they're overfolding, they're not uh, free betting enough. That's the reason we are opening very, very wide here with a king four off. So our standard opening should be with a king six, king seven off. But you see here, we are opening much wider because these guys are just overfolding like crazy. So main edge you're gonna gain uh, on the on the fast forward games is just by stealing a lot, and also by overfolding to aggression because uh, if they are so tight, they probably do not have many bluffs. So I would like to see what this guy had. So I'm gonna mark him as a fish, of course, and then fold and stay if the big blind calls. But big blinds uh, is folding so. We're not gonna see the, uh, his hand. So against the rag, UTG, who's uh, falling to a free bet 57% of the time. So standard free bet here. If he four bets, we have to fold. So uh, if we had a bigger stacks, like we are not playing now with the bigger stacks, but let's say if we both had like over 100 big blinds, this should be a standard call. 
but over 100, let's say, uh, we have 130, 140, 150 big blinds, then should it, uh, be a standard call. But in this situation, we have an easy fall. Uh, with a pair of fades and also a uh, gacha draw, here we can bat or we can check back. I think checking back is a little better option. And with our top pair jack eight, we take it down, nice. So I am expecting a lot of bluffs here on the turn ace. So sometimes you're gonna have ace, of course, but in many situations, he's just gonna bluff here with some uh, weaker hands. And we still uh, have a uh, decent draw. So we are drawing to a king, to an eight, uh, to a jack, to a nine, but unfortunately we don't hit anything. And when he bets big, he, he always have it. He always have it on this river. So it's not worth, uh, worth uh, calling uh, here to catch a bluff on the river. A6, we're not gonna, not gonna open against the good Greg who is defending a lot. So some standard uh, big blind photo steel should be around uh, 60%. Some good regs even have it uh, lower, like 55 or 50. But every time the big blind fall to steal is over 60, we can just uh, go crazy and just uh, steal, steal a lot. So I'm thinking here opening, but this guy is free betting 21%, big blind versus the button, uh, so we are not gonna open. So against him, we're gonna open some hands that we are also planning to call a free bet like 9-7 uh, suited or 4-5 suited or 2-6s uh, or 2-7s. But with a weaker hands, we're always gonna fall to a free bet. We're gonna exclude some of these hands against uh, this type of player. So I'm gonna play a few minutes more, so around uh, 30 minutes. I'm hoping to catch some um, some big bomb pot, we'll see. So against 20 big blinds, I think we have to call here. I have no idea what this guy has. He can easily have some, yeah, some Mediocre holding, so it seems we uh, draw out on him. Actually, no, he got lucky on the river. It's fine. So, if there is an opportunity for a bigger bomb pot, like uh, 15 big blinds, 20 big blinds, 50 big blinds bomb pot. So in these situations, uh, we can uh, stack off with a much uh, wider holdings. So this guy is holding a lot to a free bet. So that's the reason we are free betting with our 10-8 suited. Also 10-8 suited is totally fine as a, as a call. But against the guys who are over folding, we can free bet. And if he shoves, we can easy decision. We're gonna uh, fold every time, but expect to get a lot of folds. And he falls this time, very nice. So this is a terrible board for us. We are probably probably not uh, c betting uh, on this board ever. But this guy has a fall to c bet 54% uh, of time. So against him, we're gonna c bet here uh, because we are expecting to get a lot of folds. But when he calls, and when the worst card comes in return, and the second worst one on the river, so we're just gonna give up here. And the guy had a top pair on the flop, also some back doors. So nice hand. Uh, with the nines we can call, we can free bet, they're both fine options, depends on our opponent. So this guy doesn't seem to be for betting a lot, so uh, we're gonna free bet with our two nines. Against the opponent who is free betting a lot, we're just gonna call. So this guy is a super nit, he's free betting only 6% of the time. In uh, this situation, uh, big blind versus small blind, so we have a very easy decision. We have a fall here with a much, much stronger hands. Like if we have a ace jack here, or if we have a, like a... King 10 suited or any of these like mediocre hands, which is gonna fall against the guy who is free betting only 6% of the time. So, uh, I'm not saying that he is total free betting 6%, but he's free betting in this situation 6%. So, that's something we should uh, be uh, careful about. So, what is his positional free bet or situational free bet? Not only total free bet, because uh, total free bet doesn't mean much. So we are using it only as a guideline in situations when we don't have a big enough sample. And some, some pretty bad hands here, we have to fold. 
but then uh, six unit we can sometimes open if we have opportunity. So uh, I guess these two guys I think it's fine open. So this guy is free betting uh, only 7% of the time in this situation, so his range is very strong, which is gonna fold very easily. Uh, here we're not gonna free bet with the AS9, but with the Ace 10 I think it's fine uh, to free bet. Easy fold with, uh, with the king nine, and we take it down with the queen jack, pretty nice. So this guy is a uh, confirmed fish. He's playing 41-8, so we're gonna mark him. Uh, so we can spot him straight away. Uh, five six is in open, even in the UTG opens, we're gonna free him with the five six suited. Against the net we are folding uh, five six suited if he opens UTG, but against the reg we can uh, we can free bet sometimes. And we're gonna play maybe uh, ten more hands and call it a session. So this guy is, uh, is a huge net, so that's the reason we are opening here cut off. We're not expecting to get a lot of uh, free bets. So uh, on this board when he calls, we're not gonna. Uh, bet light, but let's see how much is he falling to delayed C bet. So against delayed C bet, he's falling 80% of time. So we're gonna bet here any two and bet the river because he, he will not have much, pretty much ever. And we take it down, nice. Uh, with the king gate, it's uh, easy to defend. You can also uh, free bet if he is, uh, yeah, against a smaller sizing, I think it's easy free bet. But if he four bets, you just have to fall. Uh, he actually four bets quite a lot, so uh, around the three percent range is his four bet. But this time he does not. So uh, we step it here. Gonna continue on any seven, on any diamond, on any ace, or any king. Or in a jack. But on this card, no, this is a terrible card for us, so uh, we're gonna check back here. So now, if we have opportunity, uh, we, we can check back and still win against uh, some of his scans like uh, Queen Jack or his hand like this. So he got pretty lucky on the river. Uh, the hand like Ace 5 suited. Uh, we folded here, but uh, if we are deeper stacked, we can sometimes 4-bet if the guy is free betting a lot. But the problem is when you're short stacked, if you 4-bet with the ace-5 suited, in many situations you will have to stack off when he shoves, because you already put a lot of money in there. Okay, okay, nice. Okay, we have a great hand here with a, with a bomb pot, so there are either 25 big blinds, we have only 50 big blinds with us, so we're gonna stack off here very wide. This is more than a good enough hand to stack off here, we're gonna be ahead of his shoving range and sometimes we're gonna be um, flipping against him so let's see and yeah we're gonna finish on the left uh, table we are ahead and we take the pot down very nice so that's it for uh, for today guys i hope you learned something new i hope it was a uh, Interesting video for you. If you have any questions, leave a comment. I'm gonna get uh, back to you as soon as possible. Bye bye.